Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Nekopon and welcome back to Nekopon Gaming. Today we're going to be talking about the fabled calamity weapons that everyone has been waiting for in Sinnoh Alice. The weapons are basically souped up version of spec weapons. Their stats are juiced up and they're extremely limited. And just like spec weapons, you cannot redeem them with medals and they're not in step up banners. So this will be all down to luck. Good luck. Or if you have a really big wallet. So these Calamity weapons will be our second set of cost 20 weapons, that being the ones that you can redeem from the metal exchange being the first set, and then these ones here as Calamity weapons will be the second set of cost 20 weapons that we can get. So as usual, featured weapons are 0.666% in rate. So if you come in here and take a look at this, it was, you'll see that it says 0.66% rate up for these three weapons that are featured. Each banner will have two Calamity weapons and a reprint spec weapon. So there are like several banners in here. We've got six in total. We have Magical Vanguard, Physical Vanguards. We have Instruments, Tomes, Staves, and Orbs. I did do a preview of these weapons with Fort Misery Gaming yesterday night in a collaboration, so please do check that out. Um, the link will be below, and if you want to hear our thoughts on them, we had some lovely conversations. That was before the weapons came out, uh, before maintenance, so now that we have actual solid information on these things, I think my thoughts are a little bit different. Yesterday we were kind of discussing based on best judgment from what we saw from the developer notes. So I was out all day yesterday on a special occasion, so I actually only looked at the weapons for maybe five minutes before filming. Um, so very guilty as charged. So today I've got more thoughts put together and the weapons are actually out. So let's do a more thorough analysis, shall we? So to start, let's get some general information out of the way. You will receive both specialization medals and metal desires for pulling on these banners. So that is the good news there since the specialization medals have a bunch of nice stuff in it. So if you come down here, you'll see in here, there's something for everyone. I think all of these weapons are pretty amazing. So you won't be losing out even if you pull a lot. But I have to say for free players or low spending players, it's probably a good idea to wait just a little bit just to see what the second half of anniversary will bring so we can see how to actually allocate your crystals. Calamity weapons are available until the 24th. We know that Hemlin will be coming and so it will be the second set of international classes. So far we know that we have Red and she's looking really adorable. She was sneak peeked in the recent Sinnoh times and the other one we're expecting to be Snow White. I'm excited to see how they will look in terms of stats, but so far I think it's gonna be really, really adorable. So let's fight the itch to pull together. Luckily for us, at least we'll be able to use our Grand Colo Crystals for those classes, but we will not be able to use them for these Calamity weapons since they will expire before we get our Grand Colo medals. The other question here is, Will they appear in the future in Limit Break banners? We don't actually know this yet, but we've been seeing the spec weapons and the Limit Break banners, so we're not sure if we're actually gonna see the Calamity weapons in there as well. Now I'm thinking I might as well try and get one copy of these Calamity weapons in case they do appear in the Limit Break banners in the future. I wouldn't want to miss out on that. Now let's take a look at the weapons. We're just gonna go down the list here. Here's the Magical Vanguard Grimoire. Starting with Iron Spear, Calamity. This is a Wind Spear with Gale of Exorcism 3, which is a straight up powerful attack with no extra frills. Paired with Dauntless Courage 2, obviously a good spear with not too much to complain about, but it's also nothing too special. It's not a revenge weapon or a nightmare weapon, so I think more of these types of weapons will definitely appear in the future. Um, but this is the second highest M attack out of all spears, and while the stats are good, I am a firm believer in investing into classes instead of weapons, in most cases for stats, because stats, those are permanent on classes, and weapons definitely have a shelf life in comparison. So the longevity of a weapon is dependent on their base stats, limit breaks, a person's luck for future weapons, cost, and just so many factors in general. I think because a spear is nothing too special, only get this if you have spare crystals after taking a look at the new upcoming classes. Next, we have the Impulse Gun Calamity. This one is a water gun with no frills, 
skill is Wave of Exorcism 4, where it just does massive damage to one enemy paired with Dauntless Courage 2. Another weapon that is ranked second highest in M attack, but this time in terms of guns. In both cases with the spear and the gun, they're both outstatted in M attack by the redeemable weapons with the specialization metal exchange. And since they're both actually functionally about the same, my recommendation is to do the same for the gun, which is only to pull on this if you have spare crystals. Now in this banner, the reprint is the wizard sickle. So the magical vanguard banner is actually a better bet for paladin since two of them are pole arms out of three. And the wizard sickle is a 19 cost water pole arm and it has the evil hail of defense three paired with dauntless courage too. It's not a particularly high statted weapon, but it's still definitely top 20 in terms of M attack. However, since it's still more defensive than offensive, I'm not a huge fan of it, and it's still a DC2 weapon, however, so it will probably still have a place on your grid. Next, let's take a look at the Physical Vanguard Grimoire. My review for this will actually be pretty similar to the Magical Vanguard one, but let's take a quick peek at it anyway. So the first one's going to be the True Dark Blade Calamity. We have Gale of Destruction 4 that deals massive physical damage to an enemy paired with Dauntless Courage 2. It's the third highest physical attack blade next to Blade of Absurdity and Serpent's Venomous Jaw. So it does have really good P attack and a massive single target damage here, which is really good. We also have Blast of Demise Calamity here. This is a fire hammer that also has Inferno of Destruction that has straight up great physical damage to 1 to 2 enemies and also paired with Dauntless Courage 2. P attack is ranked 4th out of all hammers, which is still pretty high. Like I mentioned in the Magical Vanguard Grimoire, since these skills are really nothing too special, I, I would roll on these if you have extra crystals left. Otherwise, you'll probably get more out of your crystals for the long term if you save up for the upcoming classes instead. The last weapon on the Physical Vanguard Grimoire is a reprint of the Club of Rotten Rope. Since this banner has two hammers on it and one sword, this is a better bet for crushers. Let's take a look at the Club of Rotten Robe. It has Wind God's Force 3 and Dauntless Courage 2. In my opinion, this one is just okay. Um, it's ranked 20 in P attack and the skill is all right. Again, it's like the reprint for Magical Vanguards. This weapon is more defensive than offensive, so I'm not too much of a fan of it. However, I do want to note that it does have a lot of um, magical defense on this, so if that's something you're looking for, it is still a DC2 weapon, so it probably has a place on your grid. Before we go into the rear guard banners, I just want to note that limit breaks are a real factor right now for many players. For players like myself, and I've been playing since the start of Sinnoh Alice Global, we probably have a lot of limit broken weapons by now, and so getting one copy of these Calamity weapons may not justify the small upgrade to our grids. So do make sure you have a use for these weapons and have a goal in mind for how many limit breaks you do need for the weapon to be a viable upgrade for you. If you need multiple copies, it can be a very expensive gamble. And again, you cannot redeem these weapons with metals, so do be careful. Also, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you're enjoying the video so far. All right, let's head into the rear guard banners. First up, we have the instruments, and of course, they all come with support boon too, which is really, really nice. The first one is Death Rattle Calamity. This is a wind instrument. It comes with Champions Harmony 2, which increases the physical attack and defense of two allies, and it pairs with support boon too. So this is really similar to the exquisite six stringed guitar, and this weapon has a very high physical attack, second out of all instruments and actually first in physical defense. There's been a lot of talk about tier 2 skills versus tier 3 skills and basically it's that tier 2 skills are less effective than tier 3 skills in terms of raw power. So here you can see this is a tier 2 skill. It says increase P attack and P def for two allies. But on a tier 3 skill it will be more effective so it'll say greatly increases so the word greatly be before increases to let you know that it's better than a standard one like this but those in tier three are one to two targets so on a tier three it's really a gamble if that second target will happen but generally if it's 50 percent of the time it should have more effectiveness overall in an entire colo match if we're not adding other factors like Nightmare Summons. A tier 2 skill has a 0.6 multiplier in this case, and a tier 3 skill has 0.86 multiplier in this case. So the effectiveness of a tier 2 skill is about 70% of a tier 3 skill without other factors. 
Okay, with that aside, let's, all the boring number stuff aside, let's move on to the next weapon. The next weapon we have is Sound of Immorality. Let's take a quick look at this. It is a weapon with Heroes Harmony 2 that increases the P attack and M attack of two allies, also with Support Boon 2. This is an instrument with the highest P attack and second in M attack next to the one that's available in the Specialization Metal Exchange. Now this one is a hybrid attack skill so probably more useful for guilds that have a mix of magical and physical vanguards. Both of the Calamity instruments have physical attack on them so if you're heavy on physical VGs in your team, these could be really good picks. The last featured weapon we have for instruments is going to be Sound of Entwining. This is the reprint for this banner. It is a 19 cost win instrument with Heroes Harmony 2 that increases the P and M attack of two allies, also with Support Boon 2. So basically, this is the same as the previous weapon, the Sound of Immorality, that boosts both of the attacks. Just like the last one, this is a hybrid attack weapon, so more suited for hybrid teams, as in mixed vanguards. But do take into consideration if the skills make sense for your team, and beware if they need limit breaks to become an upgrade on your grid specifically. You probably already possess some great tier 3 weapons with similar or you know more appropriate skills for your team, so do take that into consideration if you do end up pulling on this banner. Next we have Tomes, which is my favorite of course because I am a sorcerer. Again, we're faced with all these Support Boon 2 books, which is great and I'm very thankful for that. These skills are tier 2 instead of tier 3, and I've already explained this discussion in the instrument section, so I'm not going to repeat myself here about the tier 3 skills. First we have the Half-Eyed Other book, it's kind of a weird name, but we can look past that. It's a wind tome with Incantation of Shackles 2, which reduces the physical attack and physical defense of two enemies paired with Support Boon 2. And of course this is for teams with physical vanguards and facing physical vanguard teams. P attack and P def are both ranked highest of all tomes, which actually this book is very similar to Book of Night. Next we have Heavy Tome Calamity, which is a book with Exorcist's Incantation 2 that reduces the M attack and M def of two enemies with Support Boon 2. This one's actually pretty much the same as Book of the Abyss from the Specialization Metal Exchange, and M attack only being slightly below Book of the Abyss, so rank second out of all books for M attack, and M def is also rank second right below Book of the Abyss. Lastly, the reprint is going to be Teaching the Forgotten, which is a 19 cost water tome that has incantation of debilitation 2, reducing the M attack of two enemies with support boon 2. This has been a popular choice for sorcerers that's been facing full magic vanguard guilds, which there are quite a few in the top 100 guilds. This tome has the fifth highest magic attack out of all tomes. Overall, all of these support boon 2s and high stats are certainly enticing here, but I'm not going to be trusting my luck in actually getting these weapons. You probably already have a few similar books with tier 3 versions of these skills like King's Law, Military Records, Book of Nouveau Riche, Assassin's Notes, Tome of Ice, etc. Similar to what I said about Vanguard weapons, I'm going to leave it to the classes to give me the best chance at stats. But I do want to note with Sorks that your team and who you're facing is very, very important. So you'll see one of these books have physical attack, so this one right here, and the other two have magic attack, like this one. Um, and so if you're only going for one of these stats, it can be a little bit dicey. And they also have mixed defense here, so this one has physical defense and this one is focused on magical defense. So if you don't have a mixed vanguard roster, it can also be a gamble on the usefulness of these books. Please do roll at your own discretion, I do think more similar books will come out in the near future, even if the stats are not nearly as high. Next, let's take a look at the staves. With the staves, I will tell you now that I think this is probably the best banner out of all the Calamity ones, just because clerics, you know, you have it tough on these banners, and this one is a real gem for you. Um, starting with the Staff of Revival, this one has Blessed Gospel 3, and it greatly restores HP to two allies with Replenish Magic 2. Replenish Magic 2 is actually not that bad, it's right under Recovery Support 2 in my opinion, and it's still useful to have a few of. This one has the 6th highest in both physical and magical defense. The next one is Staff of Eternity. This one also has the Blessed Gospel 3 that greatly restores HP to two allies, but this one has Recovery Support 2. 
so this one is really like an ideal staff right now getting multiple copies of this would just be amazing physical defense here is rank one tied with the phoenix staff from the specialization metal exchange and then the magical defense is second right after phoenix staff again reprint for this banner is truth and lies this one has Staff of Assault 2 that greatly restores the HP to two allies and slightly increases the allies' magical attack, paired with Recovery Support 2. This banner is just a feast for two target staffs, which is something you guys truly need right now. Even though the stats on the staff are not particularly high, the heals on Truth and Lies is just a little bit weaker than the Blessed Gospel 3 on the other two staffs. I still think this is a good staff regardless. Clerics, I really do think this Calamity banner is very, 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 very good for you, and I think it's probably worth it to go all in if you can. Even the Specialization Metal Weapon is quite good. So good luck to all of you that are rolling on this. I am wishing you lots and lots of limit breaks. Lastly, we do have the orbs, and we cannot forget that our mages now, can we? First, we have the Crazy Flower Basket, and this one actually looks kind of like a birdcage, which is cool. It has Evil Thunder of Defense 3 paired with Support Boom 2. Unfortunately, the Coliseum support skill here is not great on this orb, but it does have pretty high magic attack, rank 5th out of all orbs. Then we have Evening Toxins, and this one we have Torrent of Exorcism 3 paired with Dauntless Courage 2, which is just a great pick for Colosseum. It's great with straight up damage for the primary skill, and of course an offensive supporting skill. The magic attack is ranked 4th, just 2 points above the Crazy Flower Basket. The reprint on this one is the Bubble Crown. This one is a little bit of a more defensive orb with Evil Thunder of Onslaught 3 and Mental Focus 2. It's now ranked 11th out of all orbs for M attack, which still makes it viable, but definitely not a top tier orb. I probably would have liked this better with a more offensive primary skill, which I think is the same thing I said when this first came out. All right, that is all of the weapons, and the short list of it is that Vanguards, you should pull on this if you have extra crystals left. Clerics, you should definitely pull on this. Minstrels and Sorcerers should pull at your own discretion based on your comps and your own grid needs. Mages, do what you need to based on what kind of content you're focusing on. Everyone should evaluate how many limit breaks of each weapon they need in order for the weapons to be an upgrade in their own grid before pulling. Remember, there are more anniversary banners coming up like Hemlin and the International Classes, so try to see for both of those if you can. All right, I know what you guys are thinking. I've been scrolling through this this whole time and I haven't pulled on this daily free grimoire yet and you really want me to do it right before I sign off? All right, let's do it. Wish me luck. You know, I, I don't think I've actually gotten an SR from these pools yet. Oh yeah, see, this doesn't look promising at all. <laughs> it looks it looks just like usual. Oh my god, I got an SR! <laughs> oh, it's Jabberwock, guys! <laughs> Welcome to the stage, welcome to the stage. Oh man, just as I said, I never get an SR. What a surprise, right? All right. That is it. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't yet and do check out the Royal Creator Support Campaign if you want to have a chance to win some Twilight Crystals. The link to the questionnaire and the secret keyword will be in the description down below. Seriously, if you have found this video to be educational or even just a little bit entertaining, I mean, it would mean the world to me if you would just like, comment, and subscribe. That would be so great. Thank you so much. Thanks again so much for being here with me today. Wishing you lots of good luck on your rolls and I'll see you all next time. Bye.